Hi, I hope you had a great day today. So, as we constantly focus on the physical self of the human body, today everyone focuses on diet and exercise, diet and exercise, and we constantly strive to continue to lose weight or to build our health back. What we have to keep in mind is the mental and emotional self. You see, the human body, our entire well-being revolves around five selves. It is your mental self, your emotional self, your physical self, your spiritual self, and your intellectual self. Now, good health is not just in the physical body. Good health means growing in all of these five selves. Let me repeat it. Growing in your mental self, growing in your emotional self, your intellectual self, your spiritual self, and your physical self. When we strive to grow a little bit every day in all these five selves, that's how we develop holistically. That's how our mind works in conjunction with the human body and we have total health. Because we all know someone who has a great physical body but they're depressed in their mind. They're not healthy. And we all know people who are emotionally stable but they've lost their physical health. And that's not great health in totality again. So today we all know that stress has its connection with almost every possible disease on this planet be it cancer, be it diabetes, be it cardiovascular, be it your falling hair, be it poor and dull skin, be it asthma, sinus, low immunity, you can draw a connection between stress, chronic stress and almost every disease. So we keep constantly talking about stress and believe me, it's not the easiest thing to work with. Almost every one of us, every one of us have stress in our own lives in different ways. Most of it is emotional, some of it is mental and we have to keep striving to make our mental and emotional health really, really good if we want to have a healthy body and a long and a happy life. So what do we do? We keep reading so many of these self-help books and they do help. We watch videos, we attend stress management classes, we meditate, we do yoga, we do exercise, and yet we constantly struggle with stress every single day of our life. Now stress is good for us if it's acute. There's stress, it goes up and it comes down. What's bad is the stress that's chronic. When our stress levels go up in the morning and they stay high throughout the day and then sometimes they don't even come down towards the end of the day. We go to sleep with a lot of stress which is why so many people suffer from insomnia and the inability to sleep at night because of stress. So the whole idea is, and that's why I asked you to Google that word, it's called linchpin. A linchpin is a pin that passes through the end of an axle on a wheel to keep the wheel in position and keep the wheel in balance. If the linchpin is removed, the wheel goes out of balance and falls down. So my question to you is, every one of us have a linchpin. What is your linchpin? What is your linchpin that keeps you going? What I mean by this is, what makes you feel alive? What makes you feel energized? What makes you feel connected? What are these things in your life that works for you? You see, today we've, we live in a society where if someone else is happy, we try to do the things that that person does, thinking that it will make us happy as well. But all of us have that one thing in us that keeps us alive and connected every single day. Are we aware of that? And if we are aware of that, are we doing that every single day? Let me give you an example of a couple of linchpins. So, for example, let me start off with myself. My linchpin is sleep. I need seven to eight hours of sleep. That's my linchpin. If I don't have seven to eight hours of sleep, I cannot function the next day. I'm irritable. I'm not happy. I have cravings. I cannot consult with my clients and my patients. I'm not myself. That's my linchpin. For other people, a linchpin may be that morning cup of chai. If you have that morning cup of chai, you're set, you're energized, you feel alive, you feel happy, and you can take on the day. For some people, it may be a cup of coffee. For some people, it may be singing. For some people, it may be dancing. For many people, it may be your morning exercise. For some people, it will be growing a plant, working in the garden, spending that little time with your child, which becomes the most important part of your day. These are called linchpins, and it is individual to each of you. If we spend our life trying to see what other people, what, what makes other people happy and imitate that. So if you, know, you have the whole group of friends who's constantly traveling and posting all these pictures on Facebook, happy pictures, we believe that traveling is making them happy. It may make you happy too, but it's not necessary your linchpin. You need to understand what that linchpin for you is and make sure, are you doing it every single day? 
So let's take, for example, if it's a workout that makes you feel energized, if it's a workout that you know if you skip your workout, you're dull throughout the day, you feel incomplete, you don't feel good about yourself, then that's what you should be doing every single day. If it's your yoga practice in the morning that makes you feel energized and alive, and you know that if I miss my yoga practice in the morning, I'm going to have a bad day, that's your linchpin. And when we become aware of that one or two linchpins that we have every day, my next question to you is, is it in your day every single day? Because all of us have stressful lives. And when you have that linchpin, it recenters you. It brings you back to that place of clarity, that place of joy where you feel yourself for that one hour and it energizes you to face the rest of the day. So it's so important. So when I ask most people who consult with me, what is that one thing that makes you happy or energized? And people would say, oh, uh, while I was growing up, I was an athlete. I, I, I played tennis in college and it made me feel really happy. And they're not doing it anymore. Something that made them feel happy and energized is not in their life anymore. Someone else would say, oh, I love painting. And I just, I just don't have the time to paint anymore today. Well, that's your linchpin. You've got to make time and start painting. And that's what's going to recenter you and bring you back in your life. And we all think and assume that we don't have the time for these things. These are all excuses that the human mind naturally makes. We always have an excuse in our mind to justify what we can do and what we cannot do. It's a human negative quality called blame. We constantly find a reason to blame. So we blame our job for not making enough of time for us. We blame our employers for not creating enough of time for us. But where there's a will, there's a way. So many people say, oh, celebrities have it easy. They have chefs to cook for them. They have all the time in the world to work out. That's all blame. And that leaves us with a very, very negative feeling and, of course, no accomplishment of our goal. Yep, maybe celebrities do that, but there's the whole load of other people who maintain fit bodies and happy lives as well. They do nine to five jobs. They may travel as much as you and I do. They have all the responsibilities that you and I have, do, uh, you and I have but they choose not to blame. They choose to act and they choose to do. At the end of the day, there is no such thing as common people. If we label ourselves as common people, that's exactly who we are. We are all individuals. As long as we have our hands and legs and our whole body in place, and many people don't even have that. If you have the will, there is always a way. My advice to you is to find that one linchpin in your life. Tonight, before you go to sleep, just be silent, close your eyes, take a couple of deep breaths, and really find out, really find out what is that one linchpin for you. You may not get that answer today, you may not get it tomorrow, but eventually you will. And when you find out what that linchpin is that makes you feel happy, makes you feel alive, makes you feel energized, makes you feel connected, make sure that's in your day every single day. I'll give you an example. I used to think that meditation is the most important linchpin for my day, and I could not start my day without meditating. So if I missed my one hour of meditation, the rest of my day was really bad. But then I figured even if I do 10 minutes of meditation, my day can still be as good as it is. So sometimes you may, you know, we form rules around our time. We say, okay, if I'm going to miss my workout, I don't have 30 minutes today, so I'm not going to the gym. You can still work out for 30 minutes at home. You can work out for 15 minutes at home. You can work out for four minutes at home. It's about doing the workout, not fitting it in that whole time category and saying, oh, I don't have time today, so I won't do it. So find your linchpin and believe me, when you put that in your life every single day, that is the one thing besides your breath that will recenter you and bring you to that place of joy and clarity. Have a good night, everyone. Share what your linchpins are tomorrow morning. I'm going to wake up and hopefully see each of you share your linchpins if you found it. And if you haven't found it, keep trying. You will find it. Each and every one of us have that one or two or three linchpins, which is only covered by layers and layers of stress and layers and layers of life. We've got to dig be beneath those layers and find out that one linchpin that makes you happy. Have a good night, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.